with players being off on Thursday, how much of that is holiday and or maybe just the health of your team trying to get uh, some guys some extra rest in this week? Well, we just kind of, you know, we looked at the schedule and we thought that that would be best, um, you know, for a lot of reasons. But, you know, to give them a chance to, to enjoy the holiday, um, fo- focus on that, put football, um, you know, here on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday and, and come back on Friday, you know, hopefully feeling better and, and refreshed and having the opportunity to safely celebrate, um, you know, a holiday with, with their family. Uh, Jim, Mike, I guess how do you go about? Uh, you've got three more guys coming to the designated for return list. How do you incorporate those guys back into practices, and how optimistic are you? You'll have your punter back on Sunday. We'll see what it looks like today. You know, we did a little bit of work yesterday, and, and you know, Brett's been working hard to, to get back. Um, you know, the designated for return is exactly that. They they are allowed to practice. It gives us an opportunity to evaluate them and individual and a return to play uh, setting, see what they can do on, on the show team or see what their, um, you know, availability looks like on, on the defense or the offense. Um, and then we'll, you know, we'll keep working with, with Brett to see how he feels and, and where his confidence is uh, to, to do his job. Uh, Teron. Coach, last week, very physical game against the Ravens this week. Obviously, uh, against the Colts. What is it about that defense that, that makes them? Yep. Uh, Teron, I, I have nothing, and I know that our football team has nothing but the but the utmost respect for uh, Frank, uh, his football team, uh, Chris Ballard, the, the football team that they've assembled. Uh, they, they've outscored opponents 41-3 to three in the second half of the last two games. Uh, that's um, – and that's included us. So we weren't able to score, uh, and, and the Packers were um, were able to, to get three points. So they, they aren't front runners. They are going to compete. They're going to fight, and, and they are going uh, to finish throughout the game. So for us to have a, any chance to win, you know, we're going to have to be strong throughout and, and certainly um, you know, be able to match their their – physicality and intensity, and especially in the second half of the, the football game. Is there anything that stands out about their run defense with Buckner, the, those those linebackers, as well as Blackman, or even just with – Yeah. Because they always drop the safety down in the box, it seems like. Well, they'll, they'll mix in, you know, run pressures. They mix in uh, cover two. They play that well. Um, they're well coached, and they uh, they have really good players. You know, they, they fly to the football and and that's and that's a testament to them and, and they they're, they they're, they tackle well you know I know that the linebackers are are good tacklers but the secondary players you know the, the corners tackle well when they have to replace and then when the you know the safeties are down you know it's a difficult challenge to, to get them blocked so you know we'll, we'll work hard and, and prepare and, and, and see if we can't uh, manage to try to get them blocked. John yeah, Mike, I think the uh, the NFL transaction wire had you guys working out a guy uh, this week that you've got some familiarity with in, in Brooks Reed. Uh, um, wonder if you could just kind of talk, you know, what, what you like about him and maybe the challenge of anyone potentially coming in at this point in the season and, and contributing. Yeah, you know, haven't seen Brooks in a while. We'll work him out. You know, we'll, we'll, we, we haven't seen him. You know, he'll go through the testing procedures, but – you know, the onboarding you know, takes five or six days, and um, you know that that's if we make a decision to to add anybody to the to the roster. All right, and then I had uh, a question on you know the, I guess the uh, the video or the audio of that the uh, the pregame uh, incident popped up again today, and um, question is this: uh, I know you guys commonly you go to midfield and, and kind of, you know, get yourself ready for games there. Uh, you know, is, would you talk to your team about doing that? And, and maybe, you know, conversely, would you care if another team did that on the, on the logo, uh, you know, of the Titans? So the answer is this, John, uh, I'm, I'm sure that we'll, 
get introduced. I'm positive we'll get introduced as a team again this week. I'm sure our players will run out there to midfield like they've done since I've been there. I really, really haven't even noticed. Um, they'll break it down and then they try to come over to the sidelines and I'll make some last minute adjustments or talk to some assistants and, um, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. That, that's what's going to happen, I'm sure, in Indy. Thanks. Uh, Jeff? Mike, on Questenberry, I just wondered what you thought of how he played uh, in that tough spot Sunday and how difficult is it to not only, you know, come into a game like that, but even to be kind of practice squad thinking in terms of the other team's offense and then to also still have to prepare, you know, for a situation like this. How has he handled all that? Well, David is on the active roster. Um, and I, I don't think it's hard. I mean, you, some guys, you know, that's the definition of a pro. They make the hard look easy. Everybody that's that's healthy and available, that's practicing on the active roster or the practice squad, Joe, their job is to be ready to play in the football game. Um, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it doesn't. But that's their job um, is to prepare like they are. I would say that David has done that um, every single time that, We've asked him to. He's been on the practice squad previously and, and got called up and uh, played. And sometimes he's been on the practice squad and, and not been um, called up, or he's been on the active roster and not played. But you know, I think he's always ready for the opportunity. He's into the game. He's a great teammate, and um, you know that that's part of the reason why we we like having him around, along with the versatility. And he was able to go in there and, and do his job and and help us win the football game. And beyond that, Mike, his, his history, and I know you you were part of that with him too, obviously, you know, fighting cancer a lot of years before he could even get into the league. How do you think that's kind of maybe led him to here um, in terms of, you know, having to go through all that? Also, as a guy who I maybe mean, he's 30, but he hasn't had the wear and tear of, you know, guys who would have been in the league as long as that. What, how do you think that's a factor, if at all? Well, it takes, you know, he works out. He works extremely hard, takes care of his body. Um, you know, having known David since when I was, you know, in Houston, um, you know, Tyler was a, you know, was a sophomore and, and you know, end of his sophomore year, he got switched to offensive tackle. I, I've alluded to this before, and, you know, Quiz was, was working through his you know, recovery, taught him how to play offensive line. Uh, it was pretty special to watch Tyler, you know, Look, look up to Quiz, um, would, would come over and would work with him, you know, while he was going through his rehab. And so I think just for me personally, just watching him, you know, take care of my son, um, I've always respected that. And then his battle and um, being released there and, and having an opportunity to come here and work and you know, loves football, loves his teammates. And, and I think that that shows. Uh, Terry. Thank you. Mike, if you're able to get Brett Kern back this week, uh, what does that do to kind of stabilize the special teams unit, the punt unit, and also the field goal unit because he plays such a big role? Man, I've said this before. Brett's one of the best players on our team. I've got a lot of respect for, for what he does. But he can't block. He can't cover. Uh, he's got a job to do, which is to, to kick. Um, and then, you know, hopefully put the ball down and, and turn the laces away from Steven. And then we got to make sure that we protect and then Steven's got to you know, put a good swing on it. So, you know, Brett's going to focus on his job if he can do it, uh, which is, which is punting and holding. And, uh, you know, we'll see where that is at the end of the week. And then in facing the Colts second time in two and a half weeks, what's the biggest challenge when you see a team so close to the last time you played them? Just playing better, I think, for us is taking care of the football, being better in special teams, and, and, and obviously watching how they, you know, came out in the second half, you know, down and you know, how, they, how they played the football game. You know, we're, we're going to have to be able to match that um, effort and physicality throughout the entire game. Paul? Mike, if uh... – 
if Jayon's replacement isn't a full time player, how do you decide who who gets the green dot? Who who's doing the communicating? I think that there's some conversation about that, Paul. As far as what's the best thing, you know, as far as people coming in and out, you know, you can only have one, um, you know, one one helmet with with the dot on it at a time. So I think we'll still. Still kind of working through what we're going to plan to do there. You know, I think sometimes it's probably a little difficult to have a safety do it. You know, that's always in there. So we'll probably end up having it be a linebacker. Is there is there such a thing, separate question, as, uh, as an offense that can be too reliant on play action? I'm sure there's – an offense that could be too reliant on anything. There's a defense that could be too reliant on pressure or zone. You know, but I think you have to, to do do the things that, that you feel like you're good at and the players have confidence in. That's the most important thing uh, is what you've you know, practiced and repped and, and what the players can, can go out there and execute it at a you know, fast pace and be, and be aggressive. Thanks. Uh, David Buckler. Mike, what have you seen from Deshaun Kaiser when you've worked him out and how challenging will it be for him to, to sort of digest the offense from here? I haven't seen Deshaun. I'll see him uh, in 45 minutes. And, you know, I think you'd have to ask him what it's going to be like. I'm sure it's a challenge. I'm sure the plays are all going to be similar from where he's been, but the terminology is going to be uh, different. I think that's the biggest thing, David, that we run into uh, with players or coach is going to a new system is oh we called it this but you guys call it that and you know, usually that's that's the process that happens is trying to just train your brain to to learn a new language uh buck hey mike uh without having michael for for a couple of weeks now how how much has jeff swaim kind of helped you guys in that role and, and what has he been able to do uh, with your run game yeah i mean i think jeff was a player that we worked out in training camp. Uh, felt like we wanted to add him to the roster. He had a really good workout and earned the right to, to be on this football team coming out of training camp. Um, he's been active. He's been an, inactive and has done well and, and helped us when, when he was active. Uh, has played in the backfield. Has played on the line of scrimmage. So I think he's just another one of those guys that's you know taking advantage of his opportunities that that's have come up. Uh, Jeff? Mike, just seeing if you've had any luck or any progress from uh, the guys who've been on the concu- in the concussion protocol. Luck? Uh, we're probably not going to pin our recovery on health and safety on luck, Jim, but uh, we'll we'll see where those guys are after practice. They're both scheduled to practice, and then you know, they'll have to go through the independent doctor as we work our way to, towards the end of the week.